uh, Daniel Harris, resplendent in his uh, orange top here, uh, studied art and design at London's Camberwell College. In 1984, he co-founded Cerberus Digital Jukebox, which was pretty much the first system to copyright protect, uh, first system for copyright protected internet-based music distribution. Two years later, he co-founded Cerbernet, which grew to be the UK's leading independent broadband internet service provider until it was acquired by First Telecom in the year 2000. Daniel founded Kendra, an initiative to promote an open place, open marketplace for digital media in 1999. He's a keen environmentalist and runs Free Wheelers, the international life share web, uh, life share, lift share website. Well, maybe that's maybe that's, that's the next, next. version, okay. uh, which matches uh, passengers with with car drivers. And uh, I give you Daniel Harris. It's it's company colour. <clears throat> um, hello. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about Kendra Initiative, and here goes. It's a frustrated consumer. Um, we're all consumers of content. We're all frustrated by, well, okay, I'm putting words into your mouth here. <laughs> um, I'm a frustrated consumer. Um, it's really difficult to get the content that I want, when I want, where I want, and to be able to pay for it easily, seamlessly, transparently. And this isn't a good situation. It's not a good situation for the content owners. Okay, you can get some content on Google Video, you can get some content on iTunes, you can get some content on Napster. Um, you can't get all the content. And sometimes Napster has different content to iTunes. And actually, I don't want to get the major record labels, this particular track I'm after. Actually, it's a, it's a kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a mid-label mid that hasn't actually got distribution via the networks yet. Or, Perhaps it's a band that I saw in a pub last night at the Cayley, and he hasn't got a website because I asked him. And um, <clears throat> I really like the music, but it's very difficult. You know, he said, well, I'm trying to get the website sorted, but it's not easy. It's not easy because it's not just getting a website sorted, it's getting a whole infrastructure to be able to sell your content. And so this is kind of an analogy for what the networks look at like at the moment. There's lots of wheeler dealering happening. You, s you can sell to a particular service provider. I, s I suppose on one white blob on, on, on one end is the, um, the content owner, and the other white blob on the other end is the consumer. And somehow the, uh, the content flows between them. And so this is the situation at the moment, and it, we're going to hear in the, in the music panel from um, some record labels that, that have issues with distributing content. And we'll also hear from people that are, that are providing solutions. But it is confusing. It's not too easy. It's not as easy as, say, chucking a, an email out there and tagging it with price and um, rules about where the distribution can go and um, uh, you know, uh, over 18s can't, can't listen to this, it's only for the youngsters. But it doesn't have to be like this, necessarily. Or to put it another way, let's think about how we want it to be. This is a, <laughs> this is, an idea about the World Wide Web. On the one side, you've got browsers running on any platform, on any device. And on, on the other side, you've got websites. And in the middle, you've got, they're hosted on, within a cloud where you've got servers distributed all over the place. 
It works because there's standards and there's, because there's interoperability between, between um, various devices because of those standards. A happy consumer would be one that could use any device, any application, no matter what operating systems it's, it's running on, to access any content. I mean, at the moment, the situation with purchasing content over the internet is like, imagine you wanted to view a website, but you had to download a specific application in order to view it. Every time you wanted to view a different website, you'd have to download a specific application. It just doesn't make sense now that we know you don't need to do that. Now that we know that we can put in cross-platform interoperability standards to, to make things flow. I'm being very basic here, but um, I'm sure you understand all of this. <clears throat> Not that there only is only one uh, device or one application, of course not. That's, that's not what Kendra Initiative is about. And here's a, another simple diagram of a very flat <clears throat> network. Within each of these um, globules, You've got services like DRM, payment systems, um, distribution, formats, and they're all interoperating. Now, a few years ago, we started thinking, well, wouldn't it be great to interoperate all of the metadata schemas, standards that are coming out? You might have heard of one recently called DDEX, which is... Um, a new initiative by, well, included in there is real Microsoft, um, Apple, EMI, and, and, and the MCPS, and a few other very, very large organizations. Um, <clears throat> is that classed as a B? Oh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I don't. Um, very large organizations building a standard schema for metadata for content, for, for, sorry, for music. And there are others out there too. There are many, many organizations, ISAN is another one, where you've got committees setting up, this is the schema for uh, music or films. Um, I think music, we can safely say, is more mature than the movie industry at the moment. And <clears throat> I digressed. We started looking at this issue a few years ago. And uh, it was when we started saying, well, couldn't we just interoperate this? When EMI say track and Sony say work, couldn't we just say they mean the same thing or, or, or put, put a bit of um, transcoding in there? And, and, and then when a user does a search for work, they would also find tracks. And some bright person came along, have you heard of the semantic web? And uh, we hadn't, and then we did. And the philosophy of what we were talking about fitted in with a very, very small part of what the W3C was talking about, and Tim Berners-Lee was talking about. Um, there's a lot of the semantic web that we haven't got but we don't need to, because we're only talking about a very small section of it. <clears throat> so, what we're trying to do within Kendra Initiative is promote the concept of an open marketplace for digital media, where there is interoperability between all of the devices, the applications, and the content owners who are serving the content, and also that they don't need to serve, they don't need to host the content in only one place, a la iTunes, but they can host it on their own servers. In a sense, it's a bit of a peer-to-peer -peer mo model, or in a sense, it's a bit of a worldwide web model. It's distributed. 
But the important thing now is we don't not there's more freedom in the way you describe the content because we have these semantic web um, concepts of translating, translating between languages. Is there anyone here that whose first language isn't English? Right. What, why should you tag using English tags? Yeah. I'm sure French would like to tag using French tags. You know, chanson. Equal song. Anyway. So, very, very simply, that's the goal of Kendra Initiative, is to thrust these ideas into the media industry and create bridges between the media industry and the technology industries, not necessarily on a technical level, but also, or just on a technical level, but also on a business strategic level, so that the people making the decisions get, get this concept of an open marketplace. Because once you've got an open marketplace, you drive commerce. We've seen that with the World Wide Web. We've seen that with the internet. Once you get the reach of communication, the money starts to flow. And that's what we're about. We want artists and content owners to earn money from their content and so they can carry on making their content. So, in 1999, I set up an organization that's, that's flourished somewhat to promote these, this, this concept of an open marketplace. It's a non-profit organization. Everything that we're doing within it is open source. And this is really what it's about, very simply. <clears throat> I'm sure you can read that. And um, it's about enabling interoperability, all the, all the good things, all the good things that the W3C is trying to do as well. But we're trying to actually build a system. We're, we're starting to build a system. <clears throat> In order to describe what we're doing, we actually have to demonstrate it. In order to demonstrate it, we actually have to build it. We're, we're building a little bit at a time. Of course, we're not biting off the whole thing. We're building models. Has everyone got that? Great. So very simply, the more we talk about it, the more we describe it, the more detail we give it, the more we carve it out, the more of it we build, the more likely it is to come about. And um, on Friday, we'll be demonstrating a prototype that we've built, which is, um, it looks a bit like a wiki in, in, in these screenshots, but in actual fact, it's uh, a semantic database in a very raw form. And what we're able to, to demonstrate with this is, or what we're trying to demonstrate with this, and we, we've succeeded on a very basic level, is um, that we can have distributed catalogs, so in a sense it's a peer-to-peer -peer system, and um, you can search your um, from any one of those, um, in a sense, bases, Kendra bases, the other catalogs. And also you can put in same as relationships. So we can do the chanson equals uh, song uh, as well. and also create queries to find, find me all the tracks by people who, where an artist um, has a first name of David, that kind of thing. So that's one example of the uh, interoperable, interoperable um, areas that we're looking at. We've also um, 
have a number of trials going on. Um, we have another trial to do with distribution, where we've got a number of ISPs around the world hosting test content in a kind of an Akamai-type model where um, the content will be delivered uh, by the server that is closest to the end user to um, save on bandwidth and also um, provide a high, high, the highest quality um, connection. So we, we're looking at that. Um, and we have other uh, trials that are slated, such as um, payments, commerce, it needs to, needs to come into it, rules needs to come into it so we can define, um, start, to, to start to look at um, <clears throat> when uh, uh, the content owner publishes their content, uh, what rules do they want to put on there. Um, the, the cost is obviously one that has to go on there. And um, uh, also um, other issues, they might want to say it can or cannot be shown in this territory or whatever. Which brings up an, an interesting point about um, uh, what is the interesting point? The interesting point is we're, we're making a system that is very open. It's open to the content owner saying what they want to happen with their content. But on the other side, it's also about the consumer saying how they want to get their content too. And if there's a mismatch, then nothing's going to flow. So it's not, in terms of what we're trying to do with Ken, in Kendra, we're not trying to legislate everyone should be doing downloads or pay per play or pay to own or DRM'd or non-DRM'd or whatever. It's, we're saying if the con content owner wants to put DRM on their content, fine, let them do it. If they don't want it, fine. And so when you have that kind of a system that, is, that allows any options, all the options, then you allow people to experiment much more easily. And when they can do that, they can put some songs in some formats and some songs DRM'd and non-DRM'd, and they can see which works. And there is a lot of um, fear and concern with them within, say, for example, record labels that they should or shouldn't have DRM, and um, it should be in this format or not that format. And it ends up being really confusing for them. So if they can experiment, it, it makes the whole thing a lot easier, a lot of an easier sell for them. They don't have to jump in with both feet. Okay, back to where we were. Right. Am I at the last word already? Am I at the last word already? <clears throat> no, you wanted me to extend it, didn't you? Yeah, okay. We're running good. What other trials are we doing? I think that's about it. I work better under questions anyway. Last year at W3C, Tim talked about independence of communication from the provider of the software. And I've taken that to mean, well, the independence of the content from the provider of the service. and. As Simon alluded to, things change, and uh, paradigms come and go. That's a paradigm shift, isn't it? Um, what we're doing within Kendra Initiative is trying to hold up a flag and say, listen, guys, we know you're coming this way. We know it's going to happen anyway, but listen, just come along a bit faster and trying to really coagulate and um, hone the industry to move to an open marketplace for digital media. Thank you very much. Thank you.